The Joseph Schlitt Brewing Company presents The Schlitt Playhouse of Stars. And here to introduce tonight's play is your hostess for the week. Hello there. Welcome to the Schlitt Playhouse of Stars. I'm Maria Palmer, your hostess. After the show, I shall have the great pleasure of introducing our star for this performance, Mr. David Bryan, who will play the part of Phyllis. I will play the part of Celeste, an artist living in Paris. But our story is really more about Phyllis, a man with a tortured mind. It was in Paris not too long ago that Philip lived through this haunting adventure inside his mind. A room in a large house is where it began. I don't know the exact moment or even how it began. This is for Philip to say as he begins to remember. I think it was the sound of that song played by some organ grinder, which made me sit up on that particular afternoon it up and feel a blankness I cannot describe. I don't know why it was important, but something inside of me, almost like a memory, was telling me to open the curtains and look outside. Maybe it was a song or something it recalled. Fear wasn't a thing that had come back to me yet. All I felt was a numbness and a void. The mirror was a magnet, perhaps to answer the first of my questions. Who am I? Whoever the stranger was in there, he was sick, and he was very frightened. The music from the outside was louder, and there was a man weeping. And I was thinking how unmanly it sounded when I realized it was I. It was then that I noticed the lamp. Brighter, bigger, brighter. Bigger, until I thought my head would burst. Afternoon. You slept well? Who are you? Uh, you a doctor. Where am I? A home. A most pleasant home, I assure you. Is it my home? No, no. no. My home. Where you can rest. My name is Philip? Yes. Philip who? One must call you for the moment, just Philip. You have been sick, but you are having treatment to make you well. Now, I think today you can understand me just a bit, no? I don't know. No matter. Now it is time for your friend to come. My friend? The one who comes each day at the same time. You don't remember? No. Who else comes? Nobody else. Why not? It is very good that you begin to ask questions. Why not? Why doesn't anybody else come to see me? It is not the time to talk fully, believe me, Philip. But I am happy that today we talk even so much. Where are you going? Now, that is very good that you are interested. Why can't you stay? It is three o'clock. Time for your friend to come. How are you today, Philip? You're my friend? Yes. You've been here many times. Yes. For what? Thank you for being my friend. Kate, 
I usually don't like cake. You like to eat. You're right. Your friend. Yes. And this house, where is it? In Paris. But I'm an American. What am I doing in France? Where am I then? And why are you here? You'll find out soon enough, Philip. When I start to remember, when I know who I am, and what I've been, will it be bad? Perhaps. For you too? If it's bad for you, Philip, it's bad for me. Whoever I am, did I love you? You did. I really think you did. And you? Yes. I always did. <coughs> if I heard your name, Maybe I would remember. I'm Celeste. Celeste, Philip, I'm Celeste. <laughs> Celeste seemed unreal now. And I was certain I'd never see her again. But I did see her again. The next day, and the next, and the next. And each time she brought the little cakes, smiled and told me nothing. And each time I felt a fear and wondered what it was that made her so afraid. And then came the day when the first of the doors was unlocked, and I was free to walk in this strange building with Celeste at my side. And always somewhere near was the doctor. The doctor who said it was not yet time to unlock the door to my mind. Celeste told me that I would like chess, just as I liked the cookies from the patisserie and his artists. She was right as I was beginning to know she would be. For a while, it was nice just to sit in the sun with a woman whom I had loved and whom I seemed to love again. But beyond that gate, somewhere in the outside world, I knew was the rest of the mystery. The mystery of Celeste's haunting fear, which each day, unprotected, she faced alone. By now, I knew where the keys were to that outside world. How long, Doctor, is it going to take? I cannot say, Celeste. Philip is a very difficult patient. He does not really want to be cured. But how can you say that? He, he doesn't even remember what it is. No, that is true. He does not consciously remember, but subconsciously he knows. And the subconscious mind will not let him remember. We must find some way to help him. You can help him. I'll do anything. What, what do you want me to do? I want you to go on seeing Philip. You know, he looks on you as a friend. You don't know what it's like, Doctor. To be with him every day. Loving him. And yet knowing that is all I am to him. A friend. I am sorry, my dear, but he does depend on you so. And you are his one link with the outside world. That same world he wants to forget. Now, there is a hope that one day these shock treatments I am giving Philip will enable him to remember the events of the day when he lost his memory. To relive them in his conscious mind. If I can just break that wall. But couldn't he be made to actually relive that day? 
I could explain to him and, and, and be with him and... No, that would be too dangerous. No risk is too great if it means I, I can have Philip back. No, I'm afraid, Celeste, that is impossible. But why? I could take him to the same places and meet the same people and maybe it would help. No, my dear. Philip must remember these things consciously for himself, but we cannot make him. That would be too dangerous for you. You said if he could be made to actually relive that day, it would break the barrier between his two minds. So it might. You say it. I am Philip's link with the outside world. If that link were taken away... And then came that day, the eighth day, I recall, when Celeste was late for our afternoon meeting, the day I went to look for her. to go on was the address on a cake box. The Bakery of the Artist, 19 Rue Marie. Ah, good afternoon, monsieur. What? No chess today? You are one of a fortunate one. <laughs> Find a room, Marie. Oh, but, but one kilometer down there. Before our play resumes, Schlitz invites you to an artist's studio of 400 years ago. He used a palette like this, brushes like these, pigments ground by the artist himself, and applied to a canvas made of linen. All artists have these materials, yet only one could create this revered masterpiece, the Mona Lisa. What qualities enabled one man to take these materials and use them to create a work of enduring greatness? Individuality, sensitivity, genius, an infinite capacity for taking pain. Can those qualities be found today in a product in use by millions the world over? Yes, here is a product, Schlitz beer. The basic ingredients in beer, barley and hops, and brewing equipment in some form are widely available. But Schlitz brings you a beer of matchless flavor, a beer of individuality and sensitivity, made with the loving care that distinguishes every great work of art. Schlitz and Schlitz alone has that distinctive taste that comes from just the kiss of the hop. Taste a glass of Schlitz. You'll love its matchless flavor, and its matchless flavor never varies. Join the thousands who every day are switching to this beer of perfection. Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. Schlitz, first in sales. Schlitz, the beer the world loves best. Yes. If you like beer, you love Schlitz. And now, back to the Schlitz Playhouse of Stars. Celeste was an artist. Oh, this 
You're Phineas. What a nice surprise. I didn't expect to see you here today. No? Why not? Why not? Because one month ago, when I went away on my holiday, you were in America. America? Are you well, monsieur? Yes, of course. But I, I've been ill. Oh, well, left then, monsieur. That chair, you always like that place. Oh, you know me. Always cleaning up. Yes. Well, tell me the news. What has been happening this last month since I've been away? You see, my bequest went in just an hour ago. And Madame just had time to kiss me hello and run out to church. You know how devout Madame is. Yes. So, I who like to know all the nice things about our friends and patrons, know nothing. You say you check on all your friends. But I'll bet you forget it the moment we walk out. Oh, really, monsieur? For instance, me. I'm Philip Pugh. I'll bet you don't even know my last name. Oh, please, monsieur. As many times as I have... What is it? You should rank. The name. Gordon, monsieur. Philip Gordon. Oh, okay. You won the first part. But I bet you don't know where I live. Monsieur Philip, do you not recall the many times you have come in the morning to order cake? And I have brought them to you? It is now a force. The apartment building at the end. Why did you run away from me? Because I knew you would follow me. I had nothing on me. I needed my knife. I need protection to talk to you. All right. You want to talk? Tell me what about. Hate! There's a man I hate more than any other in the world. And who is he? You. I guess I wanted to kill you once. Yet I settled for putting it all down in a book for you to read it. And suffer with that Puritan conscience of yours. It isn't finished yet, but for you, my true life model, I will tell it. Come, Philip. Sit down. This is what the book says. I memorized it so well. Title, A Puritan in Paris. How do you like it? The story as it happened. Captain Gordon comes to France during the war. Back home somewhere in his New England, he has a proper young lady as a fiancé and a proper position at the university. Is it nice to be proper, isn't it? Go on. And a new character, Drobash, an important Drobash, who was dumped in Paris during the war. He has found a few friends and a little laughter among the artists and writers here and to make the friend of the reserved Captain Gordon and takes him to these places where people laugh. And one of them was Celeste. Oh, the captain knows the plot. Yes. One of them is the Lady Celeste, whom Drobash understands. 
whom Drova loved very much. The war ends, the captain could go home, but he chooses to stay. He writes excuses to the sweetheart and the university. He's delayed, and how delayed? Having a romance with Celeste, whom he thinks is too rich for his New England blood, but whom he cannot leave. In the Rue Michel. In the Rue Michel. Now comes the scene I especially want you to hear. I'll get to laugh as I write it. We'll laugh together. The captain comes to Drobash for advice. He knows so little about this Celeste. She fell in love with him so openly, so fully, so different to the thin sweetheart back home. The Puritan is worried. He gives up so much that he's certain and corrects back home. Can all this fire and feeling really be good? Funny. No? Well, this will make you laugh. Robash, who loves Celeste so unselfishly, tells himself she needs the captain. He will make her a better husband. So Drobash, this foolish Drobash, gives up his chances willingly and allows the captain to welcome Celeste's kisses and make him understand that love is like this. The last chapter. Celeste finds out about Philip's doubt. There is something she's supposed to be ashamed of and she doesn't understand. She becomes frantic as she fights a kind of puritanical ghost. Then one day she comes to this foolish Drobash man right here in this room and she tells him, the captain has gone back home. Perhaps he will be back in a month, perhaps he won't. And she's very much afraid. Now I ask you, Gordon, what could I do? I had to sympathize. And sympathy is much more convincing when it is accompanied by love. <laughs> Such a love as I have for Celeste. <laughs> Hello, Philip. I've been waiting for you. Celeste, I started to remember. How much? I don't know how much. You remember this place? I don't think I want to. You weren't to find out the rest so fast, but now that you're here and I'm here, you've got to remember it all. Why now? Because the horrible thing that happened, happened here with you and me, must end here. What you've been seeking today is here, Philip. Think. You remember. I remember going home to try and tell the girl there. And my family. And right here, I said goodbye. I said I'd be back in a month. But it wasn't a month, was it? I don't know. You do know it was three months and, and you, you hadn't returned and I thought you wouldn't. The rest now, remember it. No, no. You've got to. This is the hard part, Philip, but you've got to remember it. 
I said I'd come back. So they all tried to stop me. But I said I'd come back, and I did. Yes, you came back, and then... I heard about Drobash. Yes, your friend Drobash. When I came back from America, someone told me, someone in the bake shop, they told me you were going with them. Yes. An hour ago, Drobesh laughed at me. And now I'm remembering. They said you were going away with him. But you were going away with him. Keep on, Philip. Keep remembering. I came here that day. Yes. No. I don't want to. You must. You must. What did you do when you got here, Philip? I don't know. Of course you do. Yes, I do know. You and Dobash. I wanted to kill him. It's all right. Now it's all right. It's the same as before. But the blackness is gone. Now I can look back. It had to be that way. You had to relive it to the end. Were you afraid the day that I came? No. Why not? Because that day I realized that you did love me. If you like beer, you love Schlitz. And here once again is the star of tonight's Schlitz Playhouse of Stars. Thank you, Maria. It was great working with you. Thank you, David. It was a real pleasure. And may I say it was a real pleasure to be with you. And I hope you will be back next week for the Schlitz Playhouse of Stars, where we will greet you with an exciting new play in the top row for a star who is a friend of mine. I'm sure a friend of yours, too. And now, this is David Bryan saying goodbye for the Schlitz Playhouse of Stars.